Well, greetings everybody and welcome back. And in this video, I have not done one of these in multiple months. Another IC station video. I uh, shot them an email a few weeks back. Actually, it was probably about a month or so ago. I hadn't heard from them in a while and I was getting bored with my projects and I just said, any chance I could do more videos? And they got back to me, did the usual, sent me a list, take your pick, and I picked this. This is something. It is a stereo TDA 2030A kit. Now looking at the photos, I guess I wasn't very observant. I did not realize this was a kit. I thought it was a complete board, you know, something like this. Now of course I'm not complaining. I like building shit. I have a whole workbench of stuff to build shit with. Another neat thing is I didn't realize until I actually took the board out that this is an IC station board. I thought it was just a a plain Chinese kit that they got a hold of and they're selling. Now I guess they uh they spun it. While we struggled to take the parts out of the bag, want to right away I'd like to voice my concerns with this kit. Right off the bat, it's a 2030A. It along with the 2050 has not been in production in years. So either these are clones, which let's be honest they probably are, or they could be pools, which I have seen before. Nothing necessarily wrong with a pooled part. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to bet, because these look clean. Kind of scratch. Let's see if we can get closer. This phone ain't the greatest. You can kind of see all the scratches on the tabs. Uh, that one, that one might just be a straight clone. Let's do this. The one on the right looks like an, a, a laser etched, and the one on the right looks like it's a, one of those uh, paint stamp things. My second concern is this is being powered from a single rail supply, which is fine. You can run these on a single rail supply. The issue is you get very little power. Here we are on the product page. I guess I somehow completely missed this photo showing it's clearly a kit. But nonetheless, it's advertised as 15 watts by 2, and for supply voltage, it says AC 9 to 15 volts. Well, we're half wave rectified on a 2200 mic filter cap. Uh, don't do that. That would probably sound awful and give you a bunch of ripple. Now, I want to get more in depth with the weaknesses of the 2030A, and this is, of course, assuming an authentic chip, which... Whether if the ones in the kit are authentic or not, we won't get into. TDA 2030A. It's rated 18 watts at 4 ohms at positive and negative 16 volts. So that would be a 32 volt supply voltage because they, they add together. Absolute maximum, positive negative 22. Positive negative 16 volts, output power, half percent THD. Into 8 ohms, you can expect 12 plus minus 19 and 8 ohms, you can bust 16. All right, that's all well and good. This is what I want to look at. Single supply. You can single supply it. It's the same as single supplying an op amp. You'll notice we have an extra uh, input filter cap, and you'll definitely want one here too, because much with op amps that are meant to be on split supply, when you run them on single supply, you have to b DC bias your input. So here comes your plus supply, it's through a 100k resistor, flows down, goes through another 100k, and goes directly into the input. Trap for young players. But this is what I want to look at. Output power versus supply voltage. At 24 volts into 8 ohms, you get 6 watts. If we crank this to its maximum, 36 volts at 4 ohms, you're just busting 22. 8 ohms, I would assume this is probably 40 at the very max. This is probably about 17. Now, modern day, single supply amps, I would not recommend this chip at all. Matter of fact, if you look at the power amps that car head units use, like the TDA 7850, and that's even a pretty weak one, but you can still buy it today. The TDA 8588 that a lot of Sony radios use... The TDA7850, which 
is getting to be a bit older, but it's still a robust chip. Or if you want to get real fancy, the STPA series. I've already went through the data sheets. All three of these chips at 4 ohms, 15 volts, will all break 20 watts easily. Now, an idea I have with this kit is to abuse these TDAs until they die. But since the pinout's the same and you can still buy them today, stick an LM1875 in its place. Its application circuit's pretty much the exact same, but it's a slightly newer chip, so you will get a little bit more power running single rail, but it's still not great. The LM1875 also recommends a 2200 microfarad output cap, and again, this kit is only a thousand. So with that little rant out of the way, which basically the TLDR of that entire rant, if you need a single supply amplifier, this is not a very good choice. As a matter of fact, you see in the data sheets, it never was. It's meant for a split supply. Now the 1875 is just about the same, but the 1875 can take a much higher voltage. In fact, I think it's single supply, you can go up to 60 with it. For a cheap kit, this does not look too bad that we have some, I'll be very thin, heat sinks, which actually has the pins to solder it to the board. And it comes with the screws. Assembly of this shouldn't be too bad. I'm just going to build it like any other kit. I'll do all the resistors first. That is the tiniest 1N4007 I think I have ever seen. Not many resistors. We only have three different values. We have a bunch of 100Ks, a couple 4.7Ks, and two 18 ohms. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out. At least they kept the bulk ones on cut tape. Pretty, look at that. And I even have all the resistors facing the same way. Just because. Now, one thing I'm not too sure about is right there, I can't tell if that's an R1 for that resistor footprint or if it's talking about the volume pot, but I do have 100k ohm resistor left. I'm going to solder all these in and then I'll uh, reference the product page to see what goes there. There's all the resistors done and I did check the product page which does have a, a bill of materials. R1 down here was the last 100k, which I don't understand why they could have put the 100k in it like they did with all the other resistors, and I uh, linked out our uh, wimpy little rectifier diode. That's also a recommended procedure for a proper kit assembly is to drop it at least twice. I think next, I'm gonna do the four ceramic caps. These, yep, they're all marked 104. So that means 10 plus four zeros, that's 10,000, no. I don't remember off the top of my head how to read it, but I do know that is a 0.1 microfarad, so these are all going to be uh, the coupling caps. And now the shiny ceramics are in. Electrolytics, we have four different values of caps here, but they're all marked on the board. And there we are with the small electrolytics. I also went ahead and put in the input jack and the LED. Got the rest of the larger caps, the speaker terminals, and I switched the uh, power header to just these male jumpers because I have a, uh, a female plug I can just stick on the end of that. So a little trick I'm going to do is I'm going to screw down these TDA chips to the heatsink, solder the heatsink down, and tighten the screw. That way there's no stress on the actual leads of the chip. But as in typical kits shipped from overseas, I got to straighten all the pins out on this. There's our uh, mismatched TDA 2030s. I'm not going to bother putting a heat sink compound on these because as we've seen from the data sheet, these chips are going to put out so little power. I do not believe it would be a concern. Got them screwed down. Now I do solder them in. Look at that. Now as is common with all these uh, TO style packages, the center lead is directly connected to the mounting tab. And in the case of the 2030, that would be uh, supply negative. But again, this is a single supply. It's going to be ground. It's going into the heat sink without an insulator or a micro washer or a shoulder washer. My bad. The mounting 
little pins are isolated. They don't connect to ground at all, which means each heat sink is isolated, but that also means it can't use the board to dissipate even more heat. I would really like to put these 2030s in sockets so I can just pull them out and stick a 1875s in it whenever I get around to ordering those. But I uh, don't have any on hand. And I believe that finishes the kit. Well, here it is. Got it connected to my supply. Set of speakers connected. I'm gonna dig out the old trusty Harbor Freight voltmeter. And we're gonna turn it on and see if it blows up. Nothing blew up, I did get a thump from the speakers. So what's my power supply at? 12.6. Let's go make sure I don't have any DC on our speakers. We well, can't see the screen, but zero, which you won't because output filter caps. So at 12 volts, I'm expecting um, negative amounts of power. My supply on my bench will crank up to about 18, 19. But I also have a little secret goodie that I actually forgot that I had. You might have to pull it out. Haven't used it in multiple years. Oh yeah, copyright free music. I don't know what song this is, but it's from the music library. So uh, we're about to find out. Make sure this phone's turned all the way up. Go to Reliable 5S, right? That is all the way. I don't hear it at all here. Just starting to hear it. Full tilt. I wonder if the gain is voltage dependent. So let's go ahead and get my supply and just uh, crank that. Oh, the filter caps are only 25 volts. That's going to put a damper on my little idea. Wow, that's it. That is cranked. My supply is maxed. And now we kill it because it's smoking. I thought I smelt burning. I decided to poke a resistor that has left a mark in my finger, and it started smoking. There's 300K resistors that look darkened. Well, we're gonna go ahead and ohms test these. Huh. Well, it's probably because it's in circuit. I'm getting a pretty shitty reading. So let's just plug it in and let it run until it pops. This thing is a pain to use because where the laser points is not where it takes its temperature from. They're about an inch apart. That one's cooking. Hundred and forty-three. Let's crank the supply voltage. Back up to twenty. You can't make that up, people. My iron's not even that hot. It's not even on. It's starting to look a little unhappy. I wonder why those are cooking so badly. Yes, it's those three, 100K. They're really making themselves known, aren't they? Yes, I don't know what's wrong with this kit. I don't know if it's bad chip. Maybe it's trying to draw too much bias current. That's the volume all the way up on 20 volts. Max of 344. I wonder how hot the actual lamps themselves are getting. That one's about 132. 131.9. Yeah, it is not happy with me. I'm looking at the product page from another person that built it. And I'm looking at his resistors, and they're in the same spot as mine, so I didn't goof it up. That 100, 100K right there, that wee tiny one, it's cooking too. 
See, it seems to stop at around 340. Let's let's shut this off. I need to. What's the color code on all these resistors that are in the 100K? Brown, black, brown, huh? Sure shit. All these resistors marked as 100K? I put in 100 ohms. I don't have any 100K resistors. Did They sent me the fucking wrong resistors. That's probably why it's biasing like fucking drawing too much. I bet this thing's probably a hell of a lot louder if you get the right parts in it. So instead of sending me 100K resistors, they sent me 100 ohm resistors. So who knows what the fuck that's doing to the circuit, but we do know as it is now, this kit is extremely unhappy with me. So, meaning that I cannot finish this video properly. So, Mr. IC Station, because I know you guys watch the videos, that's how you know, you know, when people make these boards, who packs these things? Because I was sent 100 ohm resistors and I needed 100K and it's making my circuit go up in smoke. Nah, I think we're going to try this again. After taking some time and pulling out all of my 100 ohm resistors and using all but one of the 100Ks in my stash, I think we can try this board again. Power it up. Hey, there wasn't as big as a power on thump this time. Oh, it's already louder. Already, and I've barely turned the knob. My supply is on about, I don't know, 15, 16 volts. I need to add a damn voltmeter to it, but I've been wanting to do it for three years and I haven't. Oh yes, much louder. So way to go IC station. Y'all sent me the wrong resistors. Luckily enough, I had 100Ks on hand and now it seems to actually function properly. Actually, that's getting pretty loud with not a lot of power. It kind of just goes to prove the fact wattage does not equal loud. Yeah, we're on 15 volts. Real bass heavy. She clips pretty good. Let's go ahead and crank power supply max so it'll be sitting 19, 20 volts. I gotta say, that gives a pretty good little kick for only four or five watts, maybe six. I think we'll uh, pull the dummy load and the smelloscope out and see what it's really putting out. And here we have the smelloscope out. We have my dual 8 ohm resistor bank just out of frame. I can also parallel it for a 4 ohm load. I'm going to quickly go through and a 1 kilohertz test the output of one of these channels. And I should probably disconnect the other real speaker because I'm not a fan of having 1 kilohertz tones blasting in my ears. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and plug that guy. We're starting at 12 volts, 8 ohm, we'll go to 4 ohm, then we'll up the voltage and some common values. And that little uh, sneaky sneaky device that I said I had that I, I can't use because of the input cap. 100 watt DC DC boost converter. This can crank out to 35 or 40 volts, I think. But I do not feel like having an input filter cap blow up in my face. And as typical with most single rail amps, it's clipping on the top before the bottom rail. Ah, uh, square waves.
so there we have the IC station TDA 2030A stereo kit with a uh, uh, I guess it, it's partly my fault. I should have ohms tested them first, but uh, I let my confidence get in my way and say, oh yeah, they're brown and there's a bunch of them and there's a bunch of 100K, so they're 100K. Well, right. But I've been sitting to it, listening for uh, a few minutes. First off, why is there no hole on this corner? I stuck some, I, I may as well make use of my M2 standoffs and I stuck these on it to sit it up. There's no hole on this corner. And with, even with no cables, it, it, it sags. So I have a, a lopsided amplifier board. But I don't hear much hiss. Power is low, but it, you know, near field listening, 3-4 watts is, is fine. When you are up into the, the upper power, that this can do at least, these 1000 microfarad output coupling caps do roll off the base some. And also, shout out that it doesn't have a blinding blue LED on it. Nice, good old 5mm diffused red. Haven't even seen one of those in a while. Get a little more power. Get this 25 volt filter cap up it to a 35. Run it on 25 or 30 volts. Get a little more power. But at 4 ohms, it will get hot. These heat sinks are small and they are thin. But for less than $3.00. It's really not that bad of a kit. So, link in description if you want to check out this kit. But as usual, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Sugar.